Hello, welcome to China Mosaic. I'm Wang Xiaohui for China.org.cn. On January 29th, the Sunday Times, a British national newspaper, published a report entitled Rifkind, a stooge in secret PR war on China, saying that the Henry Jackson Society, a UK think tank, is paid a total of 15,000 pounds per month by the Japanese embassy in the UK to voice opposition to Chinese foreign policy. Former British Foreign Secretary Malcolm Rifkind was also approached by the HJS and served as a stooge in this disgraceful deal. What the Japanese embassy has done is no better than espionage. So why did Japan conduct this kind of activity, which harms others without benefiting itself? As is known to all, China and Japan have been locked in long-standing problems and conflicts. Historically, Japanese imperialists had wreaked havoc throughout Asia and especially in China. However, it not only refuses to reflect on its wartime aggressions, but also tries to revise history and set itself against China on territorial sovereignty as well as trade. Of course, the main reason for this is its fear on China's rise. China's GDP had surpassed that of Japan and become the world's second largest economy. Along with its economic expansion, China is also growing into a military power. All of this has made Japan believe that China's power will lead to hegemony. In 2015, President Xi Jinping's visit to the UK has ushered in a golden decade for China-UK cooperation. This has caused a large headache for the Abe administration and prompted the disgraceful decision to wage propaganda campaign against China via a third party. How could a prominent think tank like HJS could work for Japan for £15,000 per month and a public figure like Rifkind could follow the lead of the HJS? The true reason for this might be their mistrust and hostility towards China's social system and the path it follows. Japan has never lacked the ability to play political tricks. From the September 18 incident to the Marco Polo Bridge incident, and from the Pearl Harbor attack to its attempt to purchase China's Diaoyu Islands in 2012, Japan has never failed to demonstrate that their gimmicks are always followed by bigger and more vicious schemes. However, the world is no longer what it was 100 years ago. China's rise does not rely on overseas invasion or aggression, but on the hard work of its 1.3 billion people. While making its own progress, China has contributed substantially to the world economy and provided new approaches to global governance. The Belt and Road Initiative, the building of the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank, and the hosting of the Hangzhou G20 Summit have all demonstrated that China would share its own wisdom for the global good. China's independent and inclusive development pattern cannot be impeded by those dirty tricks. The passes and paths are impregnable as iron. But we are now transcending them from the very beginning. This is the real path to a stronger China. Thank you for watching.